Movement is one of the most important mechanical aspects in all of Valorant. But whenever me and my high elo friends watch other friends that are lower elo, typically in plat and below, we always notice one common thing that is wrong with people's movement. It's stiff. And in this video, we'll talk about how you can get out of this stiff movement and become a lot more fluid by doing things like jump peeking angles, how to peek properly into your fights, when you should be counter strafing and when you should be crouch spraying, and much, much more. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get things started. To start things off, we'll talk about jump peeking angles and how you can use it to your advantage to get pieces of information. One of the most common complaints I get from my friends in lower elo is that they're constantly dying to operators and they have no idea how to counter them. And realistically, the initiators on their team should be using utilities such as a sky dog, a sova drone, or a fade prowler, or even a flash to push these operators off the angle. But the ultimate reality of lower elo is that you can't always rely on these players to use their utility in the right way. And if this sounds a lot like your games, then learning how to jump peek is a great way to avoid operators and get information before you commit to any sort of fight. So in this scenario, let's imagine that there's an operator holding B long from this point here in Octagon. Again, ideally, when walking up to an angle like this, we'd have our Sova take their drone out and drone up this angle to get any information there in the first place. But since our Sova is in another part of the map tricking off doing his own thing, we need to learn how to jump peek this angle to get information on the operator. Now, before I explain how to do this, I would highly suggest to jump into customs and learn how to do this on your own because me simply explaining how to do it isn't going to directly translate into the game without practice on your own first. But as I approach this angle here, I'm running forward and strafing to the left. So I'm holding W and A. And as I jump and I'm in midair, I'm going to hit the exact opposite by hitting D and S. And that's going to look something like this. Now, once you're able to spot an operator on this angle, it would be really wise to not re-peek as any good player is still going to be holding that angle since they haven't been pushed off that angle yet. But getting this piece of information in the first place is really important for your team as you can coordinate what utility you can use to push off this player knowing that he's there in the first place. The next tip that I have that will improve your movement is understanding when you should be counter strafing and firing in short bursts versus when you should be committing to a crouch spread. Now, in 90% of situations, you're going to be better off firing in short bursts as I've covered before in this channel in the video where I talk about tips that will improve your aim. When you commit to a crowd spray, not only are you making yourself an easy target because you're completely immobile, but you're also completely committing to a fight with no secondary plan or action. When you commit to a crowd spray, especially in long ranges, there is no going back on that fight. You're either going to get the kill or you're going to die. And in long range fights, that's not always something that you want, especially in situations where the other team is doubled up. Even if you were to get that first kill while completely crowd spraying, because you have no exit to this fight, that second player is going to trade you out immediately, resulting in no advantage for your team. As I covered in the aim tips video, one of my favorite ways to get into the habit of counter strafing, where I turn on the practice bots in the range and select breach as my agent and ult all the bots into one side of the range. From here, I kill two of the bots and practice counter strafing as I kill one bot and the other. In between each elimination that's where i'm using that time to strafe and this is my favorite way to improve my movement especially with a great translation to in game the next major tip i have for improving your movement is for the valorant players out there who are still using space bar to jump now initially i never realized how big of an issue this was and exactly how many players were doing this but the other day i asked my twitch chat what keybind they used to press jump in valorant and i was blown away by the amount of responses that still use space bar now if you have any history in csgo then it's very likely that you're using scroll wheel to jump which is definitely definitely the most optimal thing. But if you're one of the players that potentially came over from Apex, yeah, Fortnite, or any other shooter, or maybe even Valorant is your first shooter, I am begging you to take jump off of the space bar and bind it to either scroll wheel up or scroll wheel down. And the biggest reason for this is so you can keep your momentum better while you're B hopping in this game. Now, B hopping might not seem like a big deal within Valorant, and honestly, it's not in most situations. I'm gonna take you guys over to bind here and show you this quick example. Obviously, if I decide to sprint up this ramp at full speed, then footsteps are gonna be made and the other team will hear me. And if there's an example where I wanna be sneaky here and not make any noise, then I would just hold shift and walk up this ramp but that's, of course, a lot slower than running up this ramp typically would be. But one way to make it up this ramp while making no noise at all is to hold shift while you b-hop off this ramp, and it looks something like this. You'll notice that I get the same movement speed that I would if I was running up the ramp, but I get the benefit of being completely silent while doing it. And that's just one example where b-hopping is really useful in Valorant. This could be useful in a situation where you want to speed up a flank on a different map. And of course, having spacebar bound is going to make it a lot more difficult to time your b-hops properly, as opposed to something like mouse wheel up or mouse wheel down. Just a quick break in the video, guys, that over 95% of you guys aren't subscribed while you're watching these videos. So if you're enjoying the content, do me a solid and subscribe 
leave a thumbs up and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of the videos that I post in the future. And if you guys ever want to check out the live stream, I'm live on Twitch Monday through Friday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Uh -huh. I have an incredible community over there and I look forward to seeing some of you guys there soon. With that being said, let's jump back into the video. The next thing we'll cover in this video is when you should be jiggle peeking versus when you should be wide swinging. Now let's apply the jump peek mechanic that we learned earlier in this video. If I'm jump peeking short here, and I spot two or three players that are running down short, and I know that one of the players has jumped up onto this box here, then it wouldn't be very wise to wide peek into the two or three players that are running down into this lane. Of course, if I were to wide peek here, there's a potential that I get one kill, but unless I'm playing Jet or Chamber that has a dash or a teleporter, then there's absolutely no way that I don't get traded out before getting a second or third kill. But after I do that jumping jiggle peek and spot a few players, and again, I know that there's a player on this jump up spot, then it wouldn't be a horrible idea for me to take a short jiggle peek and try to isolate that one player who's in this jump up area. This is what allows me to isolate that one fight on the player who jumped up onto the box and not get traded out by the two or three other players that are running up short at the same exact time. Again, wide peeking here would expose me to all the players, but doing a short jiggle peek can allow me to better isolate fights in a scenario like this. Now, of course, it's completely impossible to cover every single scenario in Valorant where you should be wide peeking versus when you should be jiggle peeking. There are literally an infinite amount of scenarios that I could cover with that. But the best advice that I could give you on whether you should jiggle peek or wide swing is to analyze the given scenario that you're currently in. If you know that you're completely isolating one single fight, then it's likely a better idea to wide swing this player because they're not going to expect such a wide peak for one. And for two, you don't have to worry about getting traded out by a second player being there. But in a situation that I just mentioned in the short A of bind, that would be an area where you're better off jiggle peeking because you can better isolate one fight. Another super common mistake that I see are lower elo players playing super close to walls or objects in front of them when they're going to peek. And I'll show you exactly why this is a problem. Let's say that the attacking team is funneling out of A short on bind and they're coming onto site and you're playing super close against this box here. If I'm playing this close to the box, at any given time that I decide to peek, I'm going to expose myself to the angle that's pushed up to here because I can't see that on the minimap, anywhere in short, and of course, all the way up to U-Haul. And this is a problem because when I go to swing, I'm exposing myself to more than one person at once, and that goes against exactly what we just talked about in isolating your fights. But if I were to do this same thing, but step a little bit further back from this box, then I can clear each individual angle one at a time. For example, that first angle that we talked about right here, I can clear. Then I can clear the jump up. Then I can clear short, and so on and so on. So playing super close to a wall or up against an angle is a complete disadvantage when comparing that to stepping away from this angle and trying to isolate one player at a time. The last thing that I'll leave you guys with is a brand new setting in Valorant called shooting error. So if you open up your settings, and you go to video stats and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see this brand new setting called shooting error. And you're going to want to turn on the graph only. And as you can see here in this upper right hand corner of my screen, this graph will pop up and I'll show you exactly how it works. So if I'm standing completely still and shooting my weapon, you'll notice that these yellow bars come up in that graph. And what these yellow bars tell me is that I was completely standing still while I was shooting my weapon. But if I do this same exact thing while completely strafing, You'll notice that every single one of these bars is lit up in blue. And that's exactly what these lines are there to tell you. Any shot that was taken while you're completely moving is going to show up blue. And any shot that was taken while you're standing still is going to be shown yellow. This is a really great addition to Valorant and something that you should be taking advantage of if you've ever had a problem with moving while shooting in the past. I personally wouldn't suggest using it in live matches because I would find a graph like this way more distracting than it is helpful. But I would certainly suggest turning it on during something like the range or deathmatch so you can get better timings on your counter strafes while you're shooting. At the end of the day, guys, I can give you all the tips in the world to help improve your movement, but if you're not doing anything to apply it, then you're not going to benefit from it in the long run. So go ahead and get out there to the range, go out to the death match, and start be hopping around in those custom matches so you can put these new mechanics to work. Then you can move over to medium stress environments such as unrated or playing any custom five stacks with your friends. And then once you tackle the medium stress environments, you can take on rank and try to apply these same mechanics in those high stress environments. Because that's the only way that you're going to improve is taking it step by step. Again, guys, please consider subscribing to this channel if you found this content helpful. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks so much for the support. Peace.